Here's Frank Turek to misunderstand how agnosticism works. Uh, Okay, I feel like this talk's kind of going to have engendered a lot of confusion because there's a lot of things I noticed. And forgive me, I spoke out earlier. Um, That's all right. There's a lot of things that you did in this talk, in this presentation. You kind of gish galloped over a bunch of things, and there's a lot of logical fallacies. I don't want to address all of them. I can't. I know you've got a limited amount of time. The biggest problem I noticed is you mentioned a few times and kind of disparagingly this idea of an atheistic worldview, mm-hmm. and then you attack that. Mm-hmm. That's a great straw man because atheism is not a worldview. Now, to avoid the very boring debate about the correct definition of atheism, I want to say that I think there are multiple equally legitimate definitions of atheism. When philosophers discuss atheism, they usually use the definition that atheists believe in the non-existence of God. That definition of atheism does make a claim about whether God exists. However, there are other definitions, like the one Anthony Flew used to use. He preferred the definition that atheism is just a lack of a belief in any gods. This definition definition effectively stipulates that agnosticism is a kind of atheism. This is a definition that seems very popular among atheists on the internet. Again, I regard both of these definitions as legitimate. One must simply take care to be clear about which of them one is using in any particular discussion. You, and I know that you've been made aware of this because you've had debates with other people to this effect. So I would... Uh, okay, what do you mean by worldview? Well, that's what I would like to ask you. Atheism is just the rejection of the claim of theism, which tells you nothing about how that person thinks about social rules, who they want to vote for, whether they like cake more than they like pie. It's not a worldview. Atheism is simply saying God is not guilty of existing. It's not the same thing as saying God does not exist. Now, there are atheists who do that. They'd be called strong atheists or what we call Gnostic atheists. But atheism is just a rejection of the claim of God existing. Okay, let me ask you a question about this, Scott. Here's the proposition. God exists. Do you agree with that proposition? Do you disagree with that proposition? Or you don't know? I don't know. Okay, so you're an agnostic then. Well, agnosticism addresses knowledge, Mm -hmm. right? So you don't know. Theism addresses a belief claim. So there, I would be agnostic atheist. I do not know that God does or does not exist, but I do not believe that he does. Okay. Apologists have a lot of trouble dealing with this definition of atheism because it makes it harder for them to shift the burden of proof. Frank hates the idea of an atheism that doesn't make a claim because then the burden of proof falls entirely upon him, the apologist, to demonstrate the truth of his views. Well, you still believe that you don't know whether God exists, so it's still a belief. Agnosticism is not even always a belief about one's knowledge. For example, I think it would be fair to call someone an agnostic if they came from some isolated, uncontacted culture which has no concept of a god. Not only would they not know whether there's a god, they wouldn't even know that they don't know whether there's a god. It's a lack of belief. No, you believe that it's true that you don't know that god exists. And your point is? Okay, well, my point is is that Atheists today are trying to say, I have a lack of belief in God. For me, that's just saying something about your psychological state. It doesn't say anything about the real world out there. Yes, Frank, congratulations on finally getting this guy's entire point. It doesn't say whether or not God exists. You're simply saying, I lack a belief in God. True. Well, this water bottle lacks a belief in God. But the we water don't bottle it... doesn't have the capacity to believe. Right, I know. What you I'm... address this with Cosmic Skeptic, like in 2017. When yeah, yeah. The, that, and okay, but the audience doesn't that. know this, so just give me a chance you to You guys answer. should check okay. that out. Okay. It's pretty good. Um, if, if, we, if we define atheism as a lack of belief in God or whatever, sure. then we're not really saying anything because everything that doesn't have the capacity to believe anything could be called an atheist then. But sometimes even the folks who define atheism as a lack of belief in a god will still stipulate that an atheist is a person who lacks a belief in a god. But even for the folks who define atheist in such a way as to include non-sentient entities, why is that a problem? I don't understand the hostility toward this particular definition of atheism. A water bottle could also be called a vegan if you say it's something that doesn't eat animal parts. As far as that label is being applied, it's ineffective in that case. I would say atheism is related only to those things that have the capacity to believe in the first place. Okay, we can argue over definitions all day long. When I'm debating an atheist, whether it's Christopher Hitchens, Michael Shermer, Jeffrey Lauder, whoever it is. Sure. when, When we set up a debate, I say, let's debate this. 
What better explains reality, theism or atheism? Or if you want to call atheism materialism, whatever you want to call it. But the point is theism is not Let trying to explain reality. Yes, we are. There are certainly theists who try to use God to explain reality, but I don't see why explaining reality must be inherent to theism. As Galileo said, the Bible tells us how to go to heaven, not the way the heavens go. No, that's not what it is doing. And I'm telling you, as an atheist, that's not what I'm doing. What I'm doing is you are coming to me and you're saying, hey, God explains X, Y, and Z. And I'm saying, well, how do you know that? And why do you know that? And convince me of that. Okay, L let me finish my point, Scott. Okay? Sure. When, when two people come to debate on this issue, I'm going to say, when I look at reality around me, when I look at the creation of the universe or the fact that the universe exists, the fine-tuning, mm -hmm. the more objective moral values, when I look at uh, what appears to be design in life and where life came from, when I look at consciousness and free will and the laws of logic and our ability to reason, I think anybody coming to, onto a debate stage has to give causes for why those things exist. Why? You don't need an alternate explanation in order to be justified in not believing in a given explanation. Also, Frank is assuming that those things require causes, and with respect to design, fine-tuning, free will, and objective morality, he's assuming that those things even exist in the first place. No, let, they let only me... have to show that your arguments aren't correct. or fallacious. No, 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 no. What, when you frame the debate the way we frame it, what better explains reality, and reality includes all those things I just mentioned, mm -hmm. then I, th I, I have the burden of proof to say I think these things are best explained by theism. And the atheist has the burden of proof to say, okay, I see those things exist. Here's my explanation for why they exist. Not true. You don't need to give an alternate explanation in order to show the inadequacy of a given explanation. Well, then I, I don't believe any atheist that I've ever seen debate with you has ever accepted a debate under that kind of framework. The framework is never that Scott, atheism they, they, is a better explanation. It's that your theism is not a sufficient well, explanation. Well, you'll have to talk to them, Scott, because they agreed every time. Christopher Hitchens. Yeah, I should check out the videos Michael, on YouTube. Yes, That's Michael not Shermer. Not Oh, okay. Just, just. I have my doubts that Christopher Hitchens went into the debate with Frank thinking that he had the burden of proof of demonstrating that God does not exist or that the universe has a natural cause. The definition of atheism that Hitchens used was the doxastic definition. He said in his debate with William Lane Craig that atheism is just a lack of a belief. Let's talk first about whether there are any good arguments to think that atheism is true. Now, it seems to me that you're rather ambivalent here that you say, you, you redefine atheism to mean a sort of atheism or non-theism. Yeah, that's, that's what it means. Um, but how do you distinguish then the different varieties of non-theism? For example, what is normally called atheism, agnosticism, or the view of verificationists that uh, the statement God exists is simply meaningless. Well, I mean, there are different schools of atheism, as you say, but the, the, there's, no, there's no claim I know how to make that says atheism is true, because atheism is the statement that a certain proposition isn't true. So uh, I wish you'd get this bit right, um, because I'm, it's there you go again. Well, I, I, I just devoted a little time to this. I said it, it's a, it is not in itself a belief or a system. It simply says you can get by uh, better, probably, we think, um, without the assumption that no one who wants you to worship a god has ever been able to come up with a good enough reason to make you do it. That doesn't sound to me like someone who would go into a debate with a theist under the premise that he had to prove that atheism is true or that it constitutes any kind of explanation for why the universe is the way it is. Just so you know. <laughs> uh, what? what? What, what did you say, Scott? I was lying? Yes. He said you were lying. Um, I, I'll be happy to, if you give me your email address, I will send you a video of all those debates, and you can I, watch. I've seen plenty of them. I watched them while I was debating with them, so you can talk. Okay, well, th those were the titles of the debates. Um, and the reason we do that, ladies and gentlemen, is because if the, let me put it this way, it's easy to smell a rotten egg, it's hard to lay a better one. That's an apt analogy because he's admitting that he's laying rotten eggs and insisting that if atheists can't lay eggs of their own, his rotten eggs are adequate eggs. Okay, so if someone has a position over there that I think is wrong, I can throw eggs at it and I can try and diffuse and say that's a bad argument, that's a bad argument. But 
I then still have the burden of proof to say, well, what is my explanation for the way things are the way they are? No, you don't. You don't need to lay a good egg in order to point out when someone else's egg is rotten. Let me give you one last illustration, because this is an important point that Scott brought up. If uh, I'm a detective and atheist Michael Shermer is a detective and we come on a dead body and I say, okay, I'm looking at all the evidence here, I think candidate X did it. And Michael Shermer says, no, candidate X did it, or didn't do it. That's, that's the wrong, that's the, that's, he's not the murderer. And I say, okay, who is the murderer then? And he says, well, I just lack a belief that your guy's the murderer. Is he a good detective? If the reason why he's rejected the guilt of Candidate X is because he's found that Candidate X has an airtight alibi, then yes, that's good detective work. But that's not the best analogy with respect to debates between apologists and atheists who merely lack a belief in a god. Those atheists are not like detectives, they're more like defense attorneys. In criminal cases, defense attorneys don't have to prove innocence. Agnostic atheists only have to show a failure on the part of the apologist to prove that God is guilty of existing in order to legitimately persist in being atheist. No. Shooting down my suspect isn't enough. If he's a good detective, he has to give reasons as to why candidate Y is the murderer. Not just to say that your guy is the wrong guy. That's all I'm saying, Scott. No, he doesn't. He only needs to establish an alibi for candidate X. Also, this analogy only works for atheists who try to prove that God does not exist. For the ones merely trying to show that apologists have failed to prove that God does exist, a defense attorney is a better analogy than another detective. Everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help. Thanks so much.